You must be willing to interrupt women if you want women. Interrupt them. Yes, they're walking down the street, they're on the phone. Interrupt them. So you have two choices in that moment. Interrupt her and have a chance or don't interrupt her and never have a chance. teach you now is a grounding meditation. This is something you can do whenever you want to throughout the day and it's going to relax your body totally. I'm not interested in teaching you guys how to do any meditation that has to do with control. To let you guys know, meditation that you're controlling your breath, you actually practice control. So I'll only do natural breath meditation. That's it. Because the natural way of life is inconsistent. When you're controlling your breath, it's very consistent. When consistency is in the picture, it is a sign that is not real. It is a sign that you're not actually here in this moment. You're trying to be in this moment by controlling yourself to be in this moment, but allowing yourself to just go with the natural breath moment to moment, that's what life is. Life is living and dying every moment. Rising and passing your sensations every moment. So as you may remain upright, what I want you to do is that I want you to close your eyes, be there with her totally. It doesn't mean being in front of her. No, that doesn't mean that. But it does mean you have the chance and the choice to stand in front of a woman or in front of people and be there totally as you. It's crazy because it's as if people have told us that you have to do so much. You have to like become this. You have to improve yourself and do all this to like get a woman or to have people accept you. But what if I told you, you don't have to do any of that. You just need to release what you're holding back when you're in front of others. What if I told you, you never had to read a book on self-development, but if you release all the things that you're holding on to internally, you would actually be that which you're trying to seek. You'd be like, yeah, man, but maybe I should read Eckhart Tolle because you know, he has this part in his book that's like this. And I go, yeah, but Eckhart Tolle is gonna bring you back to everything that I'm telling you right now. Maybe I should read Tony Robbins because Tony Robbins have, Tony Robbins gonna bring you back. And if he's not, he's putting more on top of you. Where you are right now, you, this is more than enough when you're in front of a woman. You just believe that you have to be more because everybody have told you that you have to be more. But if I told you right now that you have everything that you need right now and that you need to just release the things that you're afraid of, which means that you need to let go of your attachments to the things you hold on to, it would probably take your mind to freak out because you're like, the attachments feel safe. It feels safe for me to just see a girl right there and do this. Psych myself out. That feels safe. It really does. Your mind, it made, it made you feel safe. We literally have two choices in life. Walk towards that is unsafe, walk towards that which is safe. That's the choices you have. That's crazy that when you walk towards what's unsafe, I'm not talking about a lion. I'm talking about when you walk towards a situation that makes you feel like you want to close down. That's actually where you find freedom. When you walk towards safety, you find more of what you're already in right now. This is a choice. And I only tell you this from the position of me having been where you are and me walking through and continuing the walk. So, with that being said, I'm open to you guys and whatever questions that you have because I have no fucking clue what you guys are gonna ask me, but I'm just open to it. And feel free to talk about anything in relation to you at a deeper level 
or in relation to women. But this is not the session of, okay, I'll text this girl this, what do I text back? That's the next session. All right, this is the deeper session where you go, Tony, man, I just feel so afraid every time I see a girl and I'm trying to figure out, like, what do you have to do to actually go over to that girl? Do you have to do this or do you have to do that? Because I just can't get myself, I feel like I'm just stuck when I see her. That's what I'm interested in this session in. The deeper part. So I'm open to questions and uh, let's get rolling. I went out with a bunch of work friends and I can, I can move and dance. I'm okay, I'm comfortable dancing. So I go to a bar and the moment I have a role that oh, I can dance and everyone can accept me as, as a dancer, then I'm okay. But my area is not striking a conversation with a complete stranger. Like I always need something to be, like an, a role before I can accept myself to be open to something new. Do you want to play out the role? When you're I in the role, play out the role, do you actually want to play out the role? I think I want to just be accepted, but I don't want to be that, that thing only. Tell me, do you want to, when you're in the role, because you, when you're in it, you feel yeah. good. Yeah, I feel good. Yeah. You do. Oh, yeah. Do you actually want to be that role in that moment, though? Yes. You do want to be that role. Oh, yeah. What is the role that you want to be when, when you're in front of somebody? Like, with, let's say that you meet somebody you don't know. What is the role that you want to be? For them to accept me. For them to have a smile on their face when I meet them. Okay. And dancing is that one It just breaks that part. But any other ways, I'm always in doubt. I don't know. Okay. I so, here? so when you go in front of somebody, what you would rather be is a mirror. Because you always mold yourself to everybody that you're in front of, so you always want to yeah. you, you always want to be a mirror. Cuz I mean, when you're a mirror, you don't have to worry about not being accepted. So that's why I say, do you actually want to be the role? Do you want to be in somebody in front of someone and have to consistently, because this will be what you do to the rest of your life, because people do this, have to consistently mold yourself. It's as if, literally, I don't know the name of the Pokemon, but it's as if you're like, uh, yeah, is that Ditto the one I could, yeah, so it's as if every person you get in front of, you, you literally become them. Yeah. You do. I so you start, yeah, so that means that their jokes, you start to, uh, bring up those jokes that are like their jokes. Uh, the way that they speak, you try to match the way that they speak. Right. If they're acting really cool, then you'll find yourself trying to act really cool. If they're kind of quirky and weird, you'll find yourself trying to act quirky and right, weird. I, don't, I always want to fit in. I don't want to be the guy with a different identity. Yeah. So if you're outside of the norm, mm -hmm. around the norm, mm -hmm. what are you afraid of will happen in that place? I want to be accepted and I would be made fun of. That's not good enough. I won't be accepted is what you continuously say, but you must go deeper than that. All right, I won't be accepted, it's just the surface. What's underneath that? I would be ridiculed and... You would be rejected. That's yeah, like I would be left out. Like something that I, like I would lose something. There's something in me that always needs acceptance. When I ask you a question, don't answer right away. Because when you answer right away, that means that you're not giving yourself time to sink into what's the answer. What's underneath? I want to be accepted. I'm afraid of being alone. That's what it is. It's a fear. Yeah. yeah, so that's what it is. You're afraid of being alone. So that means that when you walk up to somebody, you mold yourself. Because if you don't, you'll, want, you're, you'll be on the outside alone. And you're afraid of being on the outside alone. Oh, yeah. So your question is, is, should you play out a role? Should you mold yourself or should you learn what it's like to be alone? Which one do you want? I'd rather be that. You want to learn what it's like? Yeah. I want to give you some, okay? To the extent that you'll be alone, is to the extent that you can connect to others. If you can't be connected to yourself while you're alone with yourself, you'll never be able to connect to people. Because when you're in front of them, it won't be you. 
like as you can see now. Everybody in this room right now, in some way, if I just said, if I placed them to just alone and walked away, things will start to happen on the inside. Yeah. They will. It's very, very difficult to be alone and with yourself, alone and connected to yourself because a lot of people don't like who they are alone. They don't. They would rather be around people because when they're around people, at least they have something they can feel good about. So that means for you, my man, learning to be alone is your path. When you go out to a bar, when you, you feel like yourself going into that dance roll, don't do anything. You need to know what it's like to not do something, to just be. There's a difference between being and doing. If doing is from the place of tension, it's fruitless. If doing is from the place of clarity, space, it's fruitful. Being, though, is what you need now. So you're worried about, before you even go up, expressing yourself yes. and having it come across having the person receive it. That's correct. It's even as if I tried to anticipate the conversation and play in my head to be prepared, but there's no such thing because you can never know until you, you talk to the, the person. When you see a person standing there and you're already playing out the scenario, you have to realize that that scenario actually won't be the way it play out. So even if you're preparing yourself, you're preparing yourself still not knowing. I challenge you to use something else, my man. Your eyes. Stop using your mind. Start using your eyes. Let's say I seen him standing there. No, it's not sitting there. And I'm like, okay, how do I walk over to him? And let's say this is a girl. Okay, let's say I saw a girl sitting there. It was an Asian girl. And let's say that I want to go speak to her. And I'm like, okay, how do I go speak to her? Okay, I'm going to tell her that she's like this. And, you know, she might say this next. Cause you, now, walk me through. Because I don't want to just say this. Walk me through. What is the conversational dialogue that you're having in your head? All right? So let's say, let's say that I'm you, okay? I see the girl. What's the thing that comes to you in a moment? What, what, what do you go through? She's beautiful. That's a beautiful Asian girl, okay. I'm talking to you now, okay? She's beautiful. Okay, now can you tell me again? Tell me the next thing. Um, she looks fun or a uh, fun personality. Okay, she looks fun. She has a personality. Okay, now that's just going through it. Now, when does the tension start to rise? Because that's the thing you want and that's what you notice. But the next thing that comes up is the tension. What is the tension now? Okay, so she's dancing. And so now you're here and you're teetering on the inside because you're like, all right, there's, there's people around her. Okay, I don't want to disrupt her because then that would mean that I'm what? A nuisance. And you don't like being a nuisance? No. Where did you learn that from? Growing up from insecurity. I, I didn't have, uh, early on, I wasn't expected, accepted uh, in the classrooms, that type of stuff. Okay, so. They're actually, the nuisance that you feel, it's not even in relation to her. But you've attached it to this situation. Because that same thing that's still bubbling underneath the surface still comes in. So it's not her. It's not this situation. It's in you. And what that means is, is for you to understand what, what is a nuisance, though. Like, what is your definition of it? And she, if she's not enjoying it, then what? Um, a 
it's not yeah. the maximization of the experience. I'm, I may still have fun and enjoy myself. I, I've been trying to train myself to enjoy uh, or take, take fun in whatever situation. But I believe the, the maximum of fun is when both people involved in the program, not just one person. You're not even happy when you go up, are you? You're not enjoying yourself. I can tell you that right now. Do you enjoy when you do you approach? Uh, in in some in some setting, yes. No. And when you approach, are you enjoying the approach? Do you approach itself? Do you see then now do you see why why you are like having all this? You're not even enjoying what you're doing. Because you're already going, it's gonna be a nuisance. You're judging what you're already doing before it even happens. I am a nuisance is what you're operating from. You can't enjoy being a nuisance. Nobody can. Unless you just are someone who just wants to dickishly do it. But you can't enjoy being a nuisance. You can't. So my question is, is do you want to enjoy walking up to women? Or do you want to enjoy being a nuisance? I would say for 99% of the time, I would enjoy being, I would like to enjoy the approach. Okay. 100% of the time, I want you to enjoy being both. Can, if I may, can that be the same interaction? Or Absolutely. You must be willing to. Okay, this is the thing. Okay. If you're not willing to be a nuisance, you can't enjoy yourself talking to a girl. You must be willing to have the girl feel that you're a nuisance. You go up to women and then you go, you know what? I want it the whole time to go well. But what about if she says something and it doesn't sit well with you? In that moment you go, well, for me, that's not true for me. Or for me, I think it's like this. You disagree. Let's say you disagree, because in that moment you disagree, unpleasancy arises. So are you a nuisance in disagreement? Are you making it unpleasant? Yes. You are. That's why I say you have to enjoy it to both extents. As much as you got to enjoy what you're doing, you have, to enjoy the, you have to enjoy the fact that sometimes you're going to be a nuisance. Last night we were out, and remember that girl, and she asked me, she was outside, sitting down and she said something about lesbian. And in this moment, I said, oh, okay, that's probably, <laughs> okay. That's, I was like, that's why she probably has short hair. And then she immediately, she's like, you don't stereotype. And I just went, yeah, but many, many lesbians do have short hair. And then she got, she didn't like that thing. But in that moment of unpleasancy, I've done that so many times where I'm like, this moment is, unpleasant, so to speak, quote unquote, unpleasant. But I know that if this stays pleasant the whole time, I won't be seen as anything to her but a friend. It must be um, it, it, unpleasancy if it's done right, which means that if you're just expressing yourself in that moment, is a good thing. You trying to make it work all the time will only turn you into one thing for the girl, her buddy. So if you really want it to work out, you must enjoy both ends. You got to enjoy the fact that sometimes she's going to be, she's not going to like what you say. That you're going to disagree. That you're going to go up and then you may say something and she may think the compliment is weird. I've walked, I mean, I remember I was in New York City and I walked up to the girl and it was the first time ever I said this to a girl. She, I don't know, she had like this, the, the way that her bone was set on her nose, it was so cute to me. And I walked up to her and I told her, the way your bone is set on your nose is cute to me. And she just went, uh, she had like a slight grin. She's like, that's weird. I'm like, I know, but that's what I like. Unpleasancy 
but I'm not turning away from it at all. Most guys in unpleasancy, they turn away. They go, oh my God, so that means this is going to now go in a bad direction. No, because your intention is to not make it a bad interaction. But you must understand, for you guys to enjoy each other, there must be some unpleasancy in there. And that's even a hurt feeling like, why is he looking at me like that? She must feel even something like that. Being a nuisance, so this, well, the way that you're talking about it, in the way of like, um, it's when you go up and you interrupt somebody. You need to interrupt women if you want women in your life. Are you willing to interrupt women? Yes. You must be willing to interrupt and be seen as a nuisance. Do you think because I go up to girls all the time, there's not girls who see me as like, get away. There's even girls where I remember I walk up to a girl in, in the bar and she just does this. Even now, I walk up to her and I say hello and she's in a group and she runs around her friend. Runs. And in that moment, I'm like, this shit gonna keep happening. It's never gonna stop. Never. It's never gonna stop. Simply because I know that I am interrupting. Sure, yes I am. But she has two choices. Be not interrupted and never meet me or be interrupted and go through the uh, feeling of unpleasancy. That's the only way, really. You must be willing to interrupt women if you want women. Interrupt them. Yes, they're walking down the street, they're on the phone. Interrupt them. So you have two choices in that moment. Interrupt her and have a chance or don't interrupt her and never have a chance. That's the reality of this thing. So seeing a woman in a situation, you must give yourself the chance in that moment to sit in. I am a nuisance, but I also want to meet her. Sit in that. Don't walk away from it. Sit in that party that feels like you're a nuisance. Because at some point, it'll fade away. Because as you keep stepping into what you really want, it fades away. It doesn't have power over you anymore. Right now, it holds power over you because you always give it the power by not going to do something. But if you go do something, something else will arise. A realization. And that realization is, I can enjoy this being a nuisance and not being a nuisance. But I can't get away from, not, from being a nuisance. I can't get away from it. I can't even get away from it. Interrupt if you want women in your life. You, sir, right here. All right. Um, so I've noticed that I judge myself based on an ideal version or idea I have of who I should be. And then that dictates whether or not I'll take action or not, whether or not I'm filling in the, that, those shoes of that person I'm imagining myself or who I should be. Who you actually are is never in your mind to let you know. So you saying, that's, I'm actually not that person who I know. That person, whoever that person is out there that you're looking at in your mind, that's, that was never you. Yeah, that's something that you feel like if you become that, you will have a certain status. Yeah, and that status is what? What, what do you want to be as far as the status? When you look at that person, what is the status that that person like, gives off? Strength. Just the ability to stay, like just to push through things and not fold or collapse. And I think like I'm afraid of like falling apart basically. So mm -hmm. I, I project an image of something that will never fall apart. So Are you him right now? Why? My question is, is are you him right now? Are you him right now? The person in your mind who you want to be that has strength, are you him right now?
just look at me. Forget what it means to be him for a moment. When was the last time you were him? But stay here with me. Keep breathing. Stay with me. You going into your mind again? Stay here with me. Oh, I'm him. Huh? I feel it now. Oh, you do? I feel it now. Why? Why do you feel it? Like, where, where in your body do you feel it? So when was the last time you were him? Stay with me. You don't know, do you? I don't. <laughs> you don't know, do I you? I don't know. Exactly. Forget about what it means to be him and you'll be him. That's why I said stay here with me. When I say it, remember, you have to go in the past and think of a situation. And you have ideas about times you were him. You do. Yeah. But the moment I say forget him, you only can feel that you're here with me. Because a person go, you know what? I want to be a man who's strong, who's great with women. You know, when I see a woman on the street, I just want to be able to walk up to her and be able to just say things and feel comfortable. And if she doesn't like it, cool, I can just go to the next girl. And I go, okay. Then he goes through his life, and then he can do that. And I go, at what moment, exact moment, where did you become all of that? And he'll have to go, well, this moment I became that, this moment I became that. And the situations don't tell you who you are. They don't. They can only give you insight into something that you already are. So any guy who says, you know, I want to become this, I want to become that, I want to become that, I want to do this thing, I want to become that. I go, okay, when you become that, at what moment did you know that you were that? Then he has to go in the past again. So never worry about what's ahead, because if you try to, people go, you know, try to look ahead to what you want to become and then make steps towards that. Because, you know, in the self-development world, they really, really put this in people's, people's head. They go, because I used to do this shit. You know, I used to visualize who I want to be. What does he walk like? You know, when he's talking to a girl, what does he sound like? You know, when he's standing there, you know, how does he look people in the eye? I used to do this. I used to visualize all the time. But through the visualization, I started to notice that this shit, it's working for me. But why do I have to every single time go into my mind, create him, and then step into him? Why do I have to create him? Am I not already him? Do I have the things that I want this guy to have? Or do I think that confidence is out here and I need to go grab it and put it in me? Do I think that clarity is out there and I need to go grab it and put it in me? Because when you create something, you're, you're basically saying, Whew, and you're looking at it. When you create something, like an image for yourself. So it's like in front of you. Yeah. And then you go, all right, I want to be this image. And what is it like to step into that image? And like, it feels good when you actually do it. Because visualization, when I used to do it, that shit used to be amazing. I used to step into it, like, man, fuck, I go out on the street and I feel like I got all the energy. I would see the girl and I'm like, I'm that guy. And I would go up and I would start playing out what I believe that guy should be. But it wasn't me. It felt like I was off. I'm like, why does it feel like I'm still off when I'm talking to this girl? You don't need to do that. You don't. So because I know that you do have a great want for knowing yourself and spirituality, meditate on when I forget I am, when I remember I'll never be, when I look ahead, it's an illusion.